Welcome to the Circus and the Spirit uh, tan, 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 with Jules today. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Tal Taubenfeld. If you never heard about me, I'm a circus artist from Israel. Uh, I teach, I perform, been around the world a little bit, and today also make circus equipment, mainly aerials and rigs. Um, and with us today, for the first interview we do, so be gentle with us, is Juliana Richards, or as I like to say, Juliana. <laughs> Not only is Tal uh, been around the world an amazing circus artist and makes amazing equipment, but he's also a very amazing person and is the husband of one of my other best 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 friends in the world and i too have traveled a lot with the circus around the world and to this day they're two of my favorite people <laughs> that i've ever worked with and have a really special place in my heart so yeah um i'm jules um currently in california at my friend's house in berkeley moving between one city to the next with the circus and found a little place of peace to uh, be at while the circus is being set up because i'm really lucky like that <laughs> yeah to be here when the circus is setting up is a great great place <laughs> yeah i don't um have to do anything other than just rig my winch and it's just two span sets with the pulleys and the cables. And so I go in for like five minutes of fame when the cupola is just, and I like to wait till the canvas is on the cupola. So not so many people can see that I'm going in the tent and doing the thing. Like yes. <laughs> I try to go in and out like a ninja. See, it has like controls that bring me up really fast and down really slow, it has like tons of speed. So. <laughs> Just it's like kind of intimidating, like. <laughs> like, it's kind of intimidating, like, um, also to this day, Tal used to do my, um, engine for my routine, and I didn't even realize how hard of a thing that is to do until now, <laughs> 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 when my routine is never the same like it was when I worked with you, when you did yeah. my... <laughs> When well, you controlled my act. <laughs> also, yeah, also back then it was a whole different engine, but for sure, you got to yeah. keep your eyes on the act. It's not just a do it to do it. Yeah, so anyway. Um, amazing. So let's let's start with some from the beginning. Some where are you from originally, even though you've been traveling now for many years? I'm mostly from Florida, Tampa Bay. Um, mm -hmm. And give us a little um, intro of how did you start Circus? You can say a few words also about what you did before or your journey. How did you start and uh, what age you started? Um, I started Circus when I was 21 or 20. And I honestly started because I had a really vivid dream about doing circus. Um, I had grown up being a serious ballet dancer for over a decade. Um, and at the time when I had this dream, I was trying to get back into ballet. Like I danced pretty seriously until I was like 18. I had to start getting some ankle surgeries okay. called when you say pretty seriously, we're talking like a uh, ballet of New York and things like this, like national ballet. Um, one of my biggest accomplishments was going to an international ballet competition and there was only 100 people accepted from the United States and I was doing that with a guy. Okay, yeah, big, big ballet. Yeah, like I did go professional at a pretty young age. Amazing. And um, yeah, I danced in Helsinki ballet competition with Jeffrey Serio, 
who Jeffrey Serio now for people that are ballet people like Jeffrey Serio is like <laughs> sensational. You know, he's been the company um, um, principal at so many high class companies and kind of like uh, Ruben Caballero. Yeah, he's like the Ruben oh, Caballero nice. of ballet. <laughs> yeah. So, Amazing. Um, <laughs> okay, she's big. Yeah. Okay, and, and then you continue from ballet. You had a vivid dream? Then I had a vivid dream. I hadn't been doing artistic involvement for a while. Like I kind of fell off the train of being like really serious in the arts and like lived quite a few different lives in that period of time. <laughs> and yeah, I had this really vivid dream and it was me on the silks. They were red silks. I was like in a white costume and I woke up and I was like, I've never thought about that ever. And I went back to sleep and I dreamt about it again, same night. So I woke up that morning and I'm like, look on my computer, is it anywhere nearby I could do this? And there was a place 15 minutes away from my house. I had just moved to Gainesville, like kind of a crash, a classic crash landing in Gainesville with a friend who like, she called at the most opportune time I needed direction. She was like, I need a roommate. I was like, okay. And she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> and <laughs> so I started living there with her, working as a waitress, doing college classes, and then starting circus classes after I had this dream and went for it. So, Amazing. Yeah. And then, since then, how many countries, yeah, it doesn't have to be exact, but how many countries did you work at? Well, my first overseas job was in Israel for a year. That's where I met Talon Mo. Um, I worked in Mexico. I worked in... Well, I got to travel a lot being working on these at these places like... I traveled to Egypt and Jordan, saw a couple of the wonders of the world there. Like, I wasn't working, but I was working close enough that I could go. Um, That's part Germany, of the, part of Holland, the part. Belgium, Bruges. I worked in Mexico as a flying trapeze artist with the Flying Royals. I worked in Canada, just subbing for a friend. I actually went to go to your wedding in Canada, and yeah. then I was going to visit my friend. Um, Camille because she lived up there and right before like literally right before I'm about to get to her apartment she's like can you actually just take over my life and live here and work as me because I need to go and she got like a last minute job in Turks and Caicos with her boyfriend at the time and wanted to go and I was like okay so I just like lived in her apartment and worked <laughs> for her for like a week it was really fun um, in Caicos is a dangerous place to go as a couple. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think they're together anymore, but nothing, I, I don't think, I don't know anything about that situation. It's so for us it worked the opposite way, but we found it there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, wow, amazing. Okay, so we have quite some... some oh, kind. wait, I'm not done. I worked in Costa oh. Rica. <laughs> nice. Uh, Airborne Aerial Arts, which is like one of the most magical places to this day. I can't wait to go back. Um, Taiwan, Ooh. which was my first Asian country. That was really cool. I was quarantined in a hotel for two weeks there. And wow. then we had two Thanks. practices before we performed for crowds of like 5,000 people each. Wow. Two it weeks, was really two intense. weeks quarantine, then two practices and boom, shows of 5,000 people. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, over the weekend we performed for like 20,000 people and it was our first gig after the pandemic and it was like so intense. It was Let so that adrenaline take over the show. <laughs> Woo! And then Saudi Arabia. That was also really intense. <laughs> wow. So that's I mean, it. And this is just this is just working wise. Amazing. Wow. Okay, let's um Okay, you mentioned I wanted to ask where did we meet, but we met in Israel working in a, in a resort together on a flying trapeze and performing together. Um, now, what's your main or your favorite skill in, in the circus? Um, adapting. 
Give, uh, you can give us even a few in the name, like different, uh, just comments. Oh. Um, Lyra has always been my favorite. Um, when I started circus, I was like, wanted to do silks because that's what I had the dream about or whatever it ended up being my least favorite. And I just really resonated with the Lyra. Like I found that I was able to really express myself the way that I wanted to, to music. But of course that took a lot of practice, but I, I was so motivated to keep practicing Lyra that it was just easy. Um, and that's when I think the true magic happens is when you know, the ease is there. It's like the creativity and the hard work yeah. is even easy. So yeah, Lyra for me is number one. Like I now have been all over the world with my freaking Lyra, you know, like <laughs> when I first walked into the circus, I was like, had my suitcase and yeah. I was just on a pit stop because I was on my way to Colorado, but I like walked in with my Lyra, like, oh, I'm just so glad I have my Lyra with me. Um, <laughs> My best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Flying trapeze, of course, is my favorite workout. Um, it's the biggest, it's a like a challenge for your soul and abilities. And I'm addicted to that kind of thing. So I love flying trapeze. And static trapeze also, I love choreographing. So to like be even on a triple trapeze act where you're like making a piece with other people I love to do. Nice. Yeah, I love to do so many different oh, so things. I do have to mention that I remember this, uh, I believe it was very much in the beginning uh, of everything. One of the times after we, we met in the beginning and um, we were going to train to fly. I love flying trapeze, if, <laughs> by the way. Um, Love it, it's something in my heart. So I remember one of the times we were training and you were, you were like, you love training in the theater and doing Lyra. Um, and you were training, you were like, ah, I'm not sure if flying trapeze is for me so much. I'm not sure if I like it. Uh, and I remember telling you, just don't judge it yet. Give it some time, like try some, have some like experience with this and practices and then see, and it, you might be addicted and it seems like, well, now, <laughs> I have to say that you're so right about that because I worked on flying trapeze rigs before I ever thought about performing on flying trapeze rigs. And I loved doing that because it was like a psychological thing to be able to say the right thing to the person that comes up on the board. Like, how am I going to be able to put this person at ease to get them off? Yes. You end up being a psychologist and it's like, <laughs> It's so entertaining and it never gets old. And I really didn't want to become a flying trapeze artist professionally. I really didn't. Yeah. And then I started to get jobs where they were like, oh, our, our instructors perform once a month. And I'm like, okay. And then I start to get into it. But before that, Tal Tabenfeld <laughs> hung for so many splits that I did not throw across. <laughs> 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 like I wish we would have kept a record because there was so many times that I would go get into the split be on the hop and then just swing back and not let go and it happened <laughs> so many times and like I cannot thank you enough for being that person yeah. for me because maybe they're <laughs> I mean <laughs> yes, no, I mean, may have given up. Someone else may have given up. My absolute pleasure. Until today, I feel like it's an honor to be this person that uh, now you're doing all the crazy things you do. <laughs> and I, yeah, I will, I will hang as many times as needed. I do remember this every time. Have, let go, Jules. Let go. <laughs> Even if you don't catch, just. But that was uh, we're talking about. Uh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago. So. It's all good. Tell me what is your like from the circus skills, let's say that you do, even if there is some that something that you didn't mention that uh, most feed your soul that you feel like. Yeah, your soul is happy. Your spirit is just flying when you do it. Um, I love doing my act right now. I'm doing an act that literally has been in my mind for like two years. Lira, and, yeah. Hoop. Uh -huh. and I was inspired by this aerialist named Chloe Fredrickson, or I might be getting her name wrong, but she did a 
a number, a beautiful Lyra number to the same song that I'm using now. And um, I remember just watching it being so inspired by her and just being like, I want to do something like this in a setting like this. And like, this is what I want to do. And finally, like, you know, that's happening now. My piece has like finally gone from my head onto the stage and I love doing my act. Other than that, um, I feel like my specialty is pirouettes in the air, on the ground, like on the flying trapeze, pirouettes is my specialty. (laughs) Um, But there's no better feeling than doing like flying trapeze or anything really in the circus with a team that has each other's backs. And that really is my favorite aspect of being involved with the flying trapeze and the fly, the workout and the challenge is being supported by the people around you. Yeah. And it's a big trust thing. Like for me, it's yeah. a huge trust thing. Like I don't like to just be like, oh, let's go catch this just to catch it. Like, no, I'm, yeah. I, I'd rather just fly for fun unless we're going to actually work towards something and we're going to start to trust each other and it's going to go somewhere because... You say well, anyway, no matter what is it, if it's flying trapeze or lira or trapeze or something else, you anyway try to bring this, uh, to do it from your spirit and not just to do it, to do it. Right, yeah, That's... and it's like, I'm definitely going through a season where I'm doing only what I really mean and it's actually leading me not to be flying at the moment and it's sad but i'm also really happy because there's other things i'm working on and focusing on and it's okay that's that's the magic of circus it's such a wide aspect aspect of such a wide uh, like area that is okay sometimes you can go if you have the ability and the skills let's move to a bit of uh, trainings what you uh, it can be short answers if you want it can you can elaborate if you want but um what's your favorite way of training like uh i don't know in the circus go running doing a uh, squats uh, like a uh, yoga what is the type favorite type of training my favorite is when the inspiration hits you know <laughs> like I love to get an idea and want to practice new skills on my Lyra or teach other people new skills on the Lyra because they're inspired and they want to learn. Um, Running is a huge staple for me. Like I feel if the whole world went on runs and they learned how to love running, the world would be healed. Like Uh, when when I'm running. As a personal trainer, one of the things that I don't like to do is run unless I need to. (laughs) <laughs> I know you can run. <laughs> no, I honestly like I just got back into running really recent. Like the other day I was on a run and I just was reminded how helpful it is for me because I get ideas, I get inspiration, I get like maybe even glimpses into the future that make me feel like these feelings of goosebump feelings and I'm like mm-hmm. in my zone I feel like I'm untouchable like that is a really important feeling to feed if that's what you want for your life and if, who wouldn't so mm-hmm. like running is an outlet for me that is that's really amazing really that you found this uh, that you found something like this that make you feel that way yeah and the favorite and a favorite stretch what's your favorite stretch to do um just if someone is uh, you know want to get inspired and try something new or split. maybe so. split. <laughs> split. <laughs> whatever is your favorite stretch whatever you like yeah i'll say splits splits that's good uh, this, this is like can be a long a uh, long-term relationship for a stretch <laughs> it has been it has been um Okay, if there is, about training still, if there is one thing that you could have known in the beginning, maybe 10 years ago, in the, your, in the beginning of your career of training, what that would help you, what would uh, you would have told yourself about that? I don't know, like taking care, doing more stretches, less stretches, not stretching, like whatever, doing exercises in 
with something, with the band, with the stick, with anyway, whatever. Um, I did go through a season where I had a lot of pain in my lower back and I really had to figure out how to fix it. So for me personally, if it was like from the beginning, you really, really need to make sure you warm up your lower back. Then, you know, and now every time if there's only one thing that I'm going to do before flying, it's like I'm warming up my shoulders and my lower back. And before my piece, I'm warming, I'm warming up my lower back and perfect. Yeah. Lower back. Warm up your lower back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I guess you kind of answered before, but maybe you will have it was in a different context. Uh, do you prefer to train alone or with people? Oh, well, it depends. <laughs> but good. of course, I would rather be training around people that, you know, want to see each other doing the best that we can do and pushing each other in a healthy way and just supporting each other there's no better feeling than that and that yes. is what i'm working towards i mean that's what i really want to do with the circus ultimately is create like spaces where that support is happening and the creation mm -hmm. and the practicing and like there's no better feeling than that so. Yeah, I guess it starts with just bringing this when you go to train anywhere and try to put well, it out. Well, I'm learning that. I'm learning that. And I do train alone a lot. And yeah. it's motivation to sure. keep learning and keep going. Amazing. What is the, your favorite place that from all the places you trained in, in the whole world, here and there, dig through your subconscious? Where is the favorite place that you ever trained? At least that comes up in your mind right now. Yeah, it's it's okay. Maybe later you will think like, wow, but at the moment. Omega Institute. Oh, yes. Omega Institute to this day is like one of my favorite flying trapeze jobs I ever had. We had such a good team there. We used to do um, circuit workouts. So, um, Camille. In the flying trapeze? Yeah. In with the flying trapeze there i mean we didn't do it on our circuit but like we had so much fun on the flying trapeze didn't like, do like uh, okay two minutes of squat then five swings then go oh my gosh the cal squat. let's do this someday we <laughs> need to do this someday <laughs> that's okay this is we will keep in mind for the next day uh, training that yeah, we have i mean trapeze. that would be the ultimate circuit workout um yeah, Maybe. so it was really fun. Like we would all pick an exercise and we would cycle through and it was, you know, there you wake up in the morning and there's free classes available for yoga and Tai Chi and meditation. And I'm really into those kind of spiritual aspects of practicing too. Amazing. So it was just the perfect place to be. That's it was amazing. flying trapeze there and like the clients we are talking about uh, flying with Peter Gold, right? Yes. The, the, the amazing Peter Gold. The cosmic <laughs> wave collapsing Peter freaking Gold. Oh, he yeah. Still such a good friend and mentor of mine in my life. So grateful for Peter Gold. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and all the clientele at the Omega Institute are like conscious humans wanting to better themselves, and that's why they're there. So the flying trapeze is there to facilitate the, it's like a catalyst for growth for these people. So they're really being conscious about how they feel about like jumping off the board for the first time. They want to talk about how it felt afterwards. And it was just like, yes. it's the best to be interacting with conscious humans like that for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I believe our, our spirit is involved anyway, if we want it or not. So if this is the dialect is open after you do flying trapeze, which is so intense, it's amazing. It's yeah, so that was just my favorite place to be working out and training and working just for so many different reasons. Also, they like fed us three amazing, like locally sourced meals every day. Like it just okay. doesn't get better than the Omega Institute. If, if we talk about it, we are, you said that this side of the, of it, it is so nice. The next question is, um, is there like any, mental mental struggle in training something that you know you're like you know you're struggling with but you keep coming back or something like this 
if there is anything that you want to just if you want to share. Definitely. Um, I mean, I find that you practice a move and it's really hard the first time and it's like a challenge to see how many times you return to that move until it gets easier. And it does. <laughs> Eventually it does. So like you just have to keep trying. And if you it's like you can feel your your brain and your body clicking together eventually if you keep at it so yeah. it's consistency it's you know figuring you out to, you like you try a new a new trick until you get your mind right about it that you're like okay i can do it and I, it's happening yeah um, yeah and it's easier with different things like i also spin poi like i spin fire and that's something i also really like to do and like the patterns and the geometric shapes that your body makes, your brain does not understand the first time you learn a new move. And it's really interesting to see how many times you repeat it until finally, like, yeah. it clicks. And it's such a good feeling. Like, yes. Now, now circus is, like, something that makes you keep growing as a person because, like, you find something and you keep working towards it and you improve and you, like, see those results. And that is the thing that becomes really addicting. But that's what, that's where the value is in life, like anything you're doing. Yeah, for so, sure. I think nowadays, especially that everything is so instant and fast, this what you're just saying to get your mind to give yourself some chances and just evaluate it even after you tried many times. It's, a, it's something that is uh, getting harder for us to do because our environment is so full of like you do it one time, you're good or not, you did it terrible or you're amazing at it, that's it, these are the two options, but that's but really, really nice. There's a big practice, the real practice is being able to adapt and stay focused on yourself and stay positive even if everything around you is not. <laughs> and that is like one of the biggest and most important skills that I've learned is necessary being in the circus. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is in life in general, but in the circus, well, maybe, okay, yeah, yeah. you did a quick change. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even see it. Um, okay, let's continue. Thank you for some uh, training advice and training uh, some from your knowledge. Um, was there a moment in your circus journey, like there was like one moment that you were like, or maybe that not that you knew like, wow, this is circus is like, this is my life. This is what I'm doing. Or maybe there was a moment that told you like, no, circus is not going to be my life. It's just for now. But if there is a moment or yeah. OK, yeah, there's very there is definitely a moment that was like, this is my path. I'm going for it. It happened with flying trapeze, too, at some point. But in the very beginning, when I had this dream and I started going to um, classes, the first class I went to, the teacher was like um, of Gainesville Circus Center, Corey Souza, also still a really good friend of mine. Um, nice. She was like, it's $100 for unlimited classes for a month. And I was like, here's a $100 bill. I'll be back tomorrow. And I went back every day. And then it happened to be that a company called On The Fly was coming to Gainesville. And they wanted to set a piece on Santa Fe College Dance Program, which is where I was existing at the time. And they were like, we want to do the, they do the harnesses, like to make people fly and like Peter Pan or just like anything. And um, big events, small events, they can make people fly. So they also wanted to incorporate some aerials and they brought an aerialist. And then I happened to be like, oh, I've been training aerials for two months. And they're like, great, do you want to do it in the show? And I was like, Sure. So <laughs> I did my first Lyra performance in the dance program at San Jose, and it was called Taking Flight. And um, the dance teacher there, Miss uh, Alora, 
um, Haynes. She was like God sent to help me. And she loved my dancing. The dance program, because I was professional, I was like at a different caliber than most of the other dancers in the program. So she kind of made this piece. Yeah, she kind of made this piece around me and she called it taking flight. So nice. at the very first of the piece, we were all in a line and we were like birds and we were on the ground. We were going like this and they were all following my movements. It was like really majestic. And then I stood up and I started dancing on the ground. And then like the guys started doing partner dancing and like throwing me up in the air and stuff. And then eventually they brought me to my Lyra and I started doing my Lyra stuff. Oh, and man. it was like, that was my last ballet performance and also my first aerial performance. And it was called Taking Flight. It gives Down me like, like it sounds like a, your transition, you know, you go from this world to that world. Amazing. Yeah, and I was like, we lost you for a second. You're back. Estoy aquí. <laughs> Estoy aquí. <laughs> Um, so just to finish, it was yeah. That was your transition to from the dance, from ballet, from the circus to the dance to amazing. What a yeah, wow! It was so it was so cute. Like I was so nervous to do my first ballet or uh, my first lira performance that I didn't wear tights because I didn't want to be slippery, which is so ridiculous. Now I look back and I'm like, I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. literally before that show i spent like maybe an hour covering up all the bruises on the back of my legs <laughs> because i had been practicing without tights and i yeah. wanted to perform without tights because i was nervous <laughs> well that's what you gotta do sometimes when you think that's the right thing to do now well i will say <laughs> that i've learned a lot of things the hard way <laughs> <Come>. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Sometimes that's what you need to do. Um, let, tell me what is um, an interaction or a meeting with someone or a colleague or a manager or whatever it can be, I don't know, the cleaner in the circus that uh, kind of changed your way or changed your life or got you elevated, got like you know, and one interaction that have to do that's really like a, it can be also not got you elevated like to, someone that taught you 10 different tricks in the, the circus. It can be spiritually, mentally, whatever comes to. There are a few things that come to mind. Some of them are easier to share. Um, Give us one. At the beginning of my career, when I first learned how to work flying trapeze, um, Corey Souza sat me down one day and she was like, well, I know you don't know exactly what you're doing with your life. So I have an opportunity to learn how to work a flying trapeze rig. Would you want to do that? Because I'm going to get a flying trapeze and then you can work for me. And I was like, sure. Yeah. So that I didn't even know what that meant at all, but I like followed her on that journey and that definitely changed my life. Another one was, um, wow. that's a great, yeah. Peter Gold was a huge catalyst for me in my career because he just had a good feeling about me is what he said. Sometimes <laughs> it's, yes, that, I feel there. he knows what is, you know, I know. Peter sometimes it just like takes so if, if we the world would have worked more of because you feel good about someone, we would have been in a whole different place. That's yeah. amazing that he can also in his place and his uh, life can uh, can actually do that. You know, and yeah, uh, he has like people projects. I really want to be successful to the point someday that I can make differences in lots of people's lives like he has done for so many so just uh, just to point uh, for anybody that don't know who is peter gold in very short so peter gold is a catcher on a flying trapeze for many many years caught the biggest people that ever flew and he was um until they closed he was the assistant manager of ringling brothers show that was the last show basically that went on train 
still traveling by train, traveling circus. So that's the guy. Um, and he started in Club Med. And then he got correct. into a, fall, a small Latin family circus, much like me. But he was hired to be the catcher. And, you know, yeah. that's a little different. But that's um, amazing. Something interesting that happened the other day is this man named Stefan, who owns Trapeze Arts in San Francisco, came to our show. And he met Peter in Club Med. And he was a cook. And nice. he was really inspired by the circus. And Peter brought him up and trained him. And now his life is flying trapeze. And he owns a school nice. and stuff. So it was so cool to meet him being like, Peter was your first coach. Peter was my first coach. Like, <laughs> nice. Amazing. Okay. So let's go into a few questions that maybe, I don't know, I wrote it for me le as less fun. But um, did you ever see or being a part of an accident in a, in a show, in a circus? Yeah. So it's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. I mean, we're talking about circus. We got to know all sides okay. of it. So just there tell us. So, no, no, yeah. no names to mention no names, where, what no circus names. or what show, but... No names and like, you know, there's accident. This this accident made me realize there's lots of accidents that happen in the circus that you probably don't hear about, you know? Yeah. Um, so when I was in, I was the gringa, which is, seems to be a trend lately in my career. Like I'm the white girl and I'm learning Spanish because everyone around me is Latin or, <laughs> or Russian or like, you know, just yeah. different. The tourists. <laughs> and we were on our way to our opening night of, um we were on the bus and i was talking to some people that we were like wow it's been so long it's been the pandemic we haven't performed for like two years so ready to get out there and finally get back to it so it was a pretty pathetic opening night because nobody showed up <laughs> like there was there was literally no one there yet so um, the high wire act goes and high wire act. High wire act. They go and um, there wasn't a lot of practice to be had before the shows. And this particular trick, which is really dangerous, was not practiced that much before our first run through. But it's something that this person used to do a lot. So feeling confident, went for it. Yep. Unfortunately, balance was lost um it was the pyramid with the chair so it was two guys with the um the Six? extension wire oh. on their shoulders so they walked out and he had the chair he places the chair on the extension high wire on their shoulders to stand up yeah. he gets all the way to the top and he's standing up to the top and the balance started wavering like this and he just totally Totally. Oh. All the way, boom, to the floor. All the way down to the ground. Just to just to make it clear for me and for anybody that's watching, they were the two people. They had like they set up like something they put on their shoulders that make between the two people that are standing on the wire, there is like a something that a, another wire or another piece of wood that on top of this they can put a chair and the guy is sitting on the chair. The yeah. third guy is sitting on the chair that is in between them, and all of them are basically balancing on the tight wire. We know how, how high, more or less? It was probably like 20 feet. 20 feet, and we're talking about 6 meters. Wow, this is crazy. And what, and okay, they lost the balance. All of them fell to the floor. So, oh, it was so bad. We he don't have to. Up. We don't have to talk about it much if you prefer not. It's okay. it's okay. He stood up and lost the balance, and like um, the other one guy stayed standing. The guy in the front. The second, the other guy grabbed onto the wire and held onto the wire, and the guy that had stood up on the chair, he fell on his head. Yo. On the ground, and there was a lot of blood. He was in a coma for a really long time to the point that 
um, we were all scared that the insurance that we had or whatever, that there was only 14 days that they would keep somebody in an in like on life support in a coma. Mm -hmm. So it was a really, really hard time because everybody on the show didn't know if this person was going to wake up in time or not. Um, yeah. And it was really, really scary and really bad. Shit. Okay. Wow. That's really too bad. And sorry, and to be a part of a show like this, it's quite tough after that. Let's put this aside. Oh, it seems a bit heavy. So let's put it. Other than let's, that, I know that um, everybody's doing much better now, so okay. there's that. And he's okay. He's alive. He's okay. I don't know if, like, everything's the same as it used to be. Like, I haven't seen this person again since, like, I saw before he left. Yeah. He still wasn't the same yet. Yeah. So, okay. like, it's a, really, it's a really traumatic head injury, maybe... I, you know, the healing process will probably be a very long time. Yeah, it's so tough. I think many times we're people sometimes hear about it in a distance or hear about it in some article, but it's, it's, it's really tricky when we all do dangerous things and it's high, even though you, the circus it's is our skill, so it usually doesn't happen. But uh, to know that is also things can happen and it's yeah, where it's us, it's people at the end, it's a person. It's, it's you can't tough. forget that what we do is dangerous, you know? Yeah. Like, it's sometimes it's easy yeah. to forget, like, oh, I got this trick in my pocket, but it's you always just have to be really careful. Other than that, like, I sprung my ankle pretty bad right before we went to a gig one time, and like, I still had to perform, you know? Yeah. And like, you don't need to be when you're flying, you're not walking on your foot. So I did the I did the act. I remember like the most painful part was flipping out of the net and just putting my foot into <laughs> what, the what a ironic. I'm flying in the air, no problem, catching, going back. But the the most painful is just going down the net, stepping on the floor. <laughs> yeah. And putting my foot into the heel and like we only took three steps and I'm like flying right <laughs> And then and the lights went off, and one of the guys on my team would scoop me up and sprint me and off the stage and set me <laughs> down and go back to break down the net. And it was like, I honestly loved that that moment because I felt supported and cared about, you know. And it was like yeah. those. Amazing. That's the thing that really means the world to me. So yeah, amazing. And now for a, for someone that is earlier in their career, that's maybe just starting, maybe just in the beginnings. Um, something that comes to your mind, one like a uh, advice that you would give, something to consider or a lesson that you've learned and you have an advice of uh, you should watch out for this, you should do this. I don't know, whatever comes to your mind, share with us uh, one something. Your connections are important. Um, if you find a connection of somebody that wants to help you out in your career, you need to make sure that you keep good communication with that person. Maybe they can help you again, or depending on how you went and handled the situation, they wouldn't help you again, you know? So you just need to be aware of that kind of thing. Like, for example, if someone sends you to a job, maybe one of your first jobs that isn't perfect because you're not going to just totally like immediately enter into the dream <laughs> you know there's a lot of steps mean. that i'm learning you probably are going to take to get to where you're going and it's not all going to be perfect there's positive and negatives to every situation and what would benefit someone that's getting a start in the circus world the most is when they get into these situations that they don't just cut loose and don't go back to the people that maybe help them get that opportunity and be like oh i didn't like it because then that person's not going to trust to help you again like you need to try to talk to the people around you to figure things out like practice the communication even if it's really hard Sometimes those are the skills that you need to cultivate to get. Amazing. To yeah, that's that's a great that's a great uh, 
great tip, you know. And on the other side, something that back then in the beginning, you thought that is have a lot of importance and is important and through your journey or maybe later on, maybe closer to now, you realize that is actually not that important or is a bit more secondary to how much you thought it will be important, if you know what I mean. Um, it's best not to get so wrapped up in like things that might be going wrong around you. Like there's, like I said, there's always positive and negatives to every job. And one of my favorite exercises and practices I've picked up in the circus is adapting. And yeah. I look back at some times where, you know, you look at periods of um, jobs or situations you were in in your life where you kind of got hung up on the things that weren't perfect. And instead, it's better to just figure out how to make it better and do the things that you can to be happy in that situation. Because when you look back, you always look back and cherish that time, no matter yeah. what. Amazing. In a way, in a way, try to try to see the like the good things in the moment and not get caught in the in small details that at the moment the, I'm in fight with this or we disagreed on something and remember the like bigger picture of yes enjoying what picture. you think. I'm so grateful for the bigger picture and that's amazing. That's a great. There has been times like within a job where the dynamic kind of changes and you kind of change how you're interacting in that environment. And that's OK. You know, like yeah. instead of being mad that, oh, now I feel like I don't fit in here and like it's not my place. I'm like, that's OK. I'm still going to show up and do a really good job. And otherwise, I'm going to be away from this place and doing other things that make me happy. And that's also a fine way to exist. Yeah, like, for sure. and you just like keep taking steps and keep gathering information about things that you do want and you don't want, and you just keep going. Like, it's chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy yeah. the chaos. That's where it comes. Well, that's what it comes down Enjoy to. Enjoy the chaos. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good sentence for a circus. Um, now. We're going a little bit uh, to what is what you feel that is a part of your body that have the like the most meaning or most impact on your creation, on creating. Is it? I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I really do, when I really do make something that I really became inspired to do. Every little, every pretty thing has some pain behind it. Okay. You know? And um, when the inspiration hits and it like comes to fruition, it's like, it shows and people yeah. feel it and there's an Amazing. energy. And Amazing. so, you know, otherwise I love, I'm so grateful for my body because like it does amazing things for me and like I just take care of it the best that I can so it can be the tool that I need to be able to interpret my creations to yeah. the world. That's like, amazing. That's... Every part of my body is important. <laughs> yeah. But you know, this is something that uh, since I was very young I used to like doing flips. I used to like doing things with my body and my mom always used to tell me you, you chose to do something that it doesn't matter if the the nail in your toe get hurt or the nail in your pinky or any part of your body, you need everything. So, you know, this is a really full commitment, but yeah, for sure. And, yeah, and maintenance, uh, maintenance and stretching and yoga, I love. It's really important. Um, that's the way also to, I believe that any if we there is certain age or certain mindset or time in our life that if we stop doing these things it, it's harder to get back to them so just loving doing it and keep doing it is the the best you could do for yourself yeah and on the other on the other side of the body if there is what is the biggest thing that sorry what is the thing or 
It doesn't have to be a thing. It can be a being, someone, uh, whatever you choose, that have the biggest impact on your creation other than you, your body. Hmm. I guess you kind of went into the inspiration and your, like your spirit when it hits, but if you have, if you have anything else, if not, it's okay. We, we move on. Well, it does come hand in hand. Like the the maintenance on your body is really important and the maintenance on your soul is really important. Like your soul care routine is just as important as your skin care routine, you know? Yeah. And like, it's all about energy because if you're focusing on where you are at vibrationally, that is the vibration and frequency that you're admitting outward. So it's just, it goes hand yeah. in hand. Okay, I like it. I, I fully believe in it. Um, what is if you, if you may um, if I don't know if you ever thought about it, but if you might think, what is for you like the spirit of circus when you think this is spirit, the circus? What this is its spirit of the circus? What you what you what comes to you? Um, I feel like circus is like a golden ticket for adventure and expansion and like um, I definitely feel like the situation, circumstances, people are always put into my life for my quickest and better ascension. <laughs> so I really feel like it's this molding thing. Like I have this golden ticket for it, ultimate yeah. adventure and like it just doesn't stop. The adventure doesn't stop and um amazing yeah That's... now how did the circus affect your spirit in what ways since i mean i guess it goes hand in hand but it's been also a, a, just a long journey you do circus now for many years that i'm sure not everything that happened in these years is circus so or maybe yes but what what part of circus affect your spirit well, it's interesting because my mind is taking me all the way back right now when I started ballet when I was young um, because I can start to see now as um, the person I am now cycles that have been kind of cyclic in my life and similar environments that I've ended up in that now like I'm just navigating on a different new level. And I think that I'm able to do it because of the way that I grew up, which was I was homeschooled as a girl, like until fifth grade, but I was very serious in ballet. I started when I was three. So I was really, really good. And I usually was always in the older girl class and I was in an environment where I was the different one. I was the young one, you know, like I got on point when I was nine and I was dancing with the older girls and it was like some of the older girls really took me under their wing and they were really nice to me. And some of the older girls were not because they were jealous and they yeah. like, you know, tried to turn more people against me all the time. And that's a similar um, reaction I solicit out of existing in the circus world and I think that even in some places it's more extreme than others and I'm able to see it and recognize it and work with that um, but sometimes it can be really isolating and really lonely and um, like just learning how to overcome that is is like that's something that really like has a pull, has a pull and come back into my, on my soul because like, you know, I always have to recenter and come back to myself or like, I'm, you know, having to deal with these dynamics and I don't really yes. know how to deal with it. And it's um, nice to have this kind of situation that you're, it's not nice that it's going back every time. If you, it's not, it doesn't feel nice, but it's Nice that you have this kind of once in a while you go into this situation that you check yourself and you can see that you evolved, let's say, and yeah. your, your spirit is uh, better about it. And I'm always like becoming more aware of the ways that I can act and change the way that I naturally react to things so that the people around me might feel better or more comfortable or whatever. 
And Good. that is me growing tremendously as a person because I'm learning how to deal with a lot of dynamics that aren't favorable very well. And yeah. I'm definitely far from being perfect on that, like really far from being perfect on that. But it is such a challenge that it's really fun. And I know that it's it's making me grow tremendously all the time. And that is definitely something that's the most attractive to me about circus. This is probably why I am who I am and where I am who I am because of the way I grew up and like the way that I just keep navigating these situations now. It's just like yeah. the path for me at the moment. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm in the point in life that I realized that situations like you mentioned, you know, that come to your life again and again in different ways and different patterns and different styles are just, there is some things that come again and again just to, for us to be able to have this check, to be able to, okay, say, wow, now I can deal with it better. Some, I, we, I have a good friend that was <laughs> saying, uh, I mean, it, it parallels for me because he was saying, um, if you think you ever, if you ever think you're enlightened, Go to your parents for a weekend and then evaluate it, you know? Go to your parents <laughs> for the weekend yeah, and see right. how enlightened you are. Yeah, right. But, but like feeling feeling my way through this world really um, and, and learning like you really do figure out who your people are, where you fit best and like with each step, just being the most respectful and as nice as I can be to all the people around me at any time, like, I know that I'm just getting closer to the ultimate dream. Like, Bring this is just jewels. another step. Bring us more jewels to the world. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to come over to Israel. You just wait. <laughs> no, you're not threatening us. Now, <laughs> that, now the next, we're getting closer to the end, but there is a few more questions. Um, so we're going into, if you ever had, um, it can be in a show, it can be just walking around the circus in your off time, it can be whatever comes to your mind, or if it happened at all, but if there is any, like, strange or supernatural experience that you had, that you saw something, that you're, or some connection, or something like that, that related to circus? Um, well, I do have tremendous guidance, and I feel like I'm tapping more and more into being able to feel what that feels like, and know when it comes up. Um, it's kind of like a visceral feeling, like when I know I'm on the right path, I can feel it. Amazing. That's <laughs> great. Okay, love it. Um, I guess I wanted to ask, I, I have here the question that is, what is the level of connection between circus and your spirit? But I think we talked enough and... <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard for me to talk about it without... Uh, it already coming up sure. but and it's it's amazing to hear because um like for my journey at least it's not always the, the the case and it's i always support more disconnection i think it's always our body and our soul and our spirit are going together it's unseparated well, i do have big dreams like i said earlier i want to be able to help a lot of people i feel like there is no better i mean there is I've seen so much happiness be shared within communities of coming together and building a circus show and like putting it on together. I feel like there is no better feeling than that. And I would love to be more involved about bringing that to communities. And because I feel like circus is such a special show that the people that are performing are having as much fun as the people in the audience. And that's not the case in a lot of shows. And yeah. like, I want to just bring more of that to the I world. So like, I'm it. shifting and finding my way to be able to do that. 
That's a, that's a life mission, you know. It's not something you do in a snap of a finger. Exactly. So this um, is the big what, picture, you know. What is what is the um, or how important or just how you feel about the as you're performing, which you already mentioned, you perform in small places or smaller, and you perform in places of thousands of people. What is your connection to the audience? when you are in your act, when you are on the stage, in the air, is there a connection? Can you even see them with the lights on your face or is yeah. what, what you feel about it? Um, when we perform those big, huge flying trapeze acts for thousands and thousands of people, we're, we're on the big screens in the arena, like we can't see the audience there. You can just feel the audience and it feels like an ocean of energy, of people that are like yelling and it is so like wow and you're just up there with your team which is amazing right now i really love the situation that i'm in because i can see the audience they sit really close to the stage and there's always it never fails to be those couple little girls in the audience that are just in awe of yeah. like you being you and there's no better feeling and i definitely try to play that up a lot. Like I'll make connections with those little girls and be like, hey, and then just like slide away, you know, and they're just like, whoa. And yes, wow, that's actually, I like the two because I think many times we think of like when you can't see them, you, but I like what you said about the flying trapeze that you're also, you are in this bubble, but you feel the energy and you feel the masses there and screaming and cheering. It's I mean, I'm nice. much more relaxed performing my lyric piece these days. <laughs> I do have, if I do have to say uh, from the side of the little girl looking at the, uh, the little Juju, I have to say that your you on the Lyra is quite hypnotizing no matter how many times you watched it. Oh, thanks, yes, Charles. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I always remember also us training and no matter who is passing in the theater at that time, always someone is like stopping it stuck with a face in the middle of their way watching you <laughs> and then realizing like, whoa, I stood here for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. You are uh, always the one observing what was going on, like protecting us. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Now tell us, uh, tell us something about circus and um, circus and love something about it. One, one, it doesn't have to be a long story or a long journey. You can just tell us something. Don't fall in love in the circus. <laughs> Don't fall in love in the circus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, if I'm this jaded. is what you have to say, this is what you have to say. <laughs> I'm jaded right now. Like, I feel like I'm more single than I've been in my whole life. And I feel like pretty, like, I just want to be that way for a while. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's good enough. Got it. Okay, let's move on. Now tell me, we have, I think, three more questions, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Now, um, as as we were sp speaking, I need to uh, give us one memory you have from us working together. Some memory, it can be funny, it can be silly, it can be intense, it can be whatever you can whatever you remember oh my gosh yes. so much stuff working with, me, I'm, working with me i'm sure there was some of each one so just choose whatever you want <laughs> oh my gosh so much is coming up i remember we had a circus cat a circus cat you remember nala definitely of course i remember nala and we had a circus cat and um those kittens died <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our kittens died. Um, when we celebrated Hanukkah Christmaka together, that was really fun. The one day that it rained in Israel, yeah, that was really fun. Working in the like desert of the desert of Israel, so there was not much rain, I guess. Oh rain. yeah, and like working there when it was like. Um, what was it, 110 degrees outside every day, and we were working for five hours outside every day, and we were like, we were helping each other a lot, like making sure that we always had cold water in the fridge. We would like chug 10 bottles of water a day, like with our hats on. There was no training on the flying trapeze during those months, and those were yes. hard months to get through. 
Definitely. Yes, I, I very much remember the, I think it was the first day that you, you all arrived because you were like you, another guy from the US and Maureen, which is from Canada. <laughs> you arrived, I remember, by, like we started at nine, by 12 o'clock, we, you were all with eyes on yourself in the theater, like, listen, we're done for today, we cannot, I mean, we <laughs> cannot do it anymore. Yeah. And we had to survive. Um, <laughs> making making Makato was something really magical, and that was so fun. I mean, Maureen was the creative mind behind Makato, but, um, like, I was so inspired with her i ended up making a lyra piece that fit my character perfectly and that mm. was so fun um Amazing. the time where you broke mo's nose during the show oh boy and i had to run on and uh i improvised some silks to like because i very much remember this what is it i remember it. I, first of all let's just mention that the nose breaking was not circus related i just ran out of the stage and into her nose. No, I'll and tell it, I'll tell it. So okay. Maureen and I were like dancing backstage because we were being silly when we performed a lot because we were a really good, happy team together. And we were just like dancing backstage and there was a teepee entrance to go to uh, off the stage and on the stage. And like Mo was like, Makato, she goes into the teepee like this. And as soon as she ducks her head in, I see from the back, her head whips back like this. And I was like, and then Tal comes out of the TV. <laughs> like, oh, he just shit. rammed into her, like, into her face with that. Oh, my God. And, yes, like, for, for a moment, she was like, oh, oh, my God. Because she was literally about to go on stage for her act. And yes. she, you were like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she goes on the stage, and I'm sitting there like, oh, my gosh, what just happened? Because I felt like something was wrong, you know? Yeah. What has happened and why there is blood on the floor? <laughs> yeah, she comes back through the thing. I'm still standing there because I'm I'm like looking at Tao because Tao's like watching Mo, like what's gonna happen. And she comes out to me and she has her hand on her face like this and she was like, Go on stage. <laughs> oh, and I was just like brr, 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 <laughs> went right on the stage. Um Something else that I really cherish from that time is the the time that Mo and I made that jazz piece. Oh yes, I she was also this. the creative mastermind for that too. But like the energy that we felt like we wanted to like release at that time, and it was like we created something together to get through some hard times together, and it was just that was so much fun. That's beautiful. Great. Okay, with that, let's go to the, our last thing. It's just um, a final message, a final sharing, insight, whatever you feel like giving. It can be for people that do circus. It can be for people, whoever is watching. It can be whatever you want. Share with us what comes to your heart, your mind, some, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I'm just thinking about us all walking on the beach together again. <laughs> <laughs> the is just to walk more on the beach with people you like. Just walk more on the beach with more people. Work with more people that love you and support you and believe in you. And they, they want to see you shining as bright as they can, not having to like dim your light to feel like you're making everybody around you comfortable, even though that's sometimes what you have to do like finding the people that you really resonate with that like you can do big things in the world with that's where I want to be. Amazing. That's great. And wow, I'm, I, it just reminded me. It's amazing that we're, I'm so happy that we're still in contact and still know each other and still communicate yeah. after, I don't know, it's been, I don't know how many, six, seven, eight years, something like this. Um, and with that, thank you so much. You're welcome. It was a great interview. I think anybody that does circus or that does spirit can take something from it um, and can enjoy it. And this is uh, the first interview of many that I hope to do and bring circus artists from all over the world, different, uh, maybe different skills, different experiences 
Um, and uh, you are very welcome to check uh, just technical things, to check our website or our Instagram, all these things. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's www.circus-monkeys.com. You can see anything you want about us, some of our experiences or journey. And thanks for Jules. And Jules, tell us how we can follow you, how we can see you doing something or follow your crazy journey that is uh, ever evolving. You can follow me on Instagram at Flying J Girl. Flying J Girl. Let's do it. We, we will all do. And it's been a great pleasure. That's amazing. Maybe we will do another interview later on. It yeah, so yeah, definitely. <laughs> and maybe before then, I'm going to come meet Matt, though. You're very welcome to come anytime. He will be loving it. Um, yes, and keep spreading your love. Keep doing what you do. Keep being your amazing self. And keep doing it. Keep the circus. Love you. Love I you love all. you. Thank you. See you on the next one. Okay.